My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. But with bills to pay and a family to feed, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. Come along as I follow my passion trying to create art that shows the essence of nature in a photograph. I'll be sharing my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Riding the Edge. Well, the other day, I was walking along this trail and I had my camera with me. And I started experimenting with uh, multi-shot compositions. I've been doing panoramic images off a tripod with uh, multi-shots and then putting together in post. And I thought, huh, what if I could do this handheld for certain subjects, if the conditions are right. It might be a fun option to keep in my toolbox if I uh, see something that might benefit from either a larger file or benefit from being able to move them closer because I can shoot vertically and then stitch them together, shoot three or four frames. Getting closer allows me to blur the background a little bit more. I'll have to forgive my voice. I'm, for some reason, <laughs> losing it again. But the ability to go out with one lens and use it in multiple ways can be very useful. So I think in this video, I don't know how many days it's gonna, I'm going to be doing this, but throughout this video, I'm going to do handheld um, multi frame images. I don't know what lenses I'll use. Right now I've got a, a 55 millimeter. Last time I went out and did it handheld I shot one frame with a 135 millimeter and that added a really kind of cool look. So over uh, the course of a few days, a week, I don't know, we'll see if we can find a few shots. I don't know if we're going to all be on this trail. I just like to take my camera along when we're going walks. We'll see what we come up with. The trick to this shot is trying to keep the... Uh, camera parallel to the, the subject as I move to the side because I can't pivot the camera I can't spin it on a tripod I have to try to keep the same distance and move along and, uh, and stay parallel to the subject plus I had the camera set to f8 so my depth of field that close is probably pretty narrow we'll see if it turns out it, it's one of those things where you just kind of practice a lot to, uh, to to get down now if the conditions were breezy and stuff like that these kind of shots, these close-up shots, I wouldn't even try. And I've noticed the breeze is starting to pick up a little bit. So I may just get a couple different looks today. With the shots that are a little bit further away, like the trees, that kind of thing, I can probably still pull that off handheld. And uh, that won't, the motion won't be nearly as important as when I'm close to these smaller subjects, shooting close-ups. The subject really needs to be still.
Well, I'm not sure how practical doing this is for my photography, but it is kind of fun to see what I come up with. It's, it's probably something I won't use that much. I think working with the tripod is a lot more accurate. It allows me to use uh, lower ISOs, but uh, there are times where in a pinch, I think this would be fun to use and I could use it. But as a uh, <laughs> daily thing, it's something I'm gonna need to practice with. The verdict's still out on it. We'll see. <laughs> starting to rain pretty good. These blackberries caught my attention kind of around these, uh, being kind of framed by these leaves. Now this one most likely won't turn out because I'm really getting in close. The amount of <laughs> magnification is quite large, but it's fun to see what the limits are with this approach. I'm gonna try a few different approaches going from bottom up and from side to side, we'll see which one I like the best. The way the rain's coming down, this will probably be my last shot. <laughs> we'll continue later. the structure of this weed I did three frames and I started at the bottom and worked my way up I believe I'm at an f11 135 millimeter lens what using longer focal length does for me is it allows me to isolate this more in front of a darker area when I start using 50 60 millimeter lenses it brings in too much background area and if there's a a lot of light stuff in the back it really distracts this is going to be close because there's still some lighter stuff down below we'll we'll see if it works or not that little piece there caught my attention <laughs> it's much lighter than the rest of the fern Hopefully the background is dark enough to uh, help it stand out. The images I'm getting on this uh, <laughs> on this little exercise probably aren't that good, but that's not really the point. The point is I'm trying to learn a, a new technique that I don't use very often. And the uh, best way to do it is just go out and try it. And I just figured I'd take you along. That's what I do on this channel. You're uh, coming along with me as I, I'm on my journey. <laughs> you're, you're coming along with me as I, as I grow as a photographer. As I say in my intro, you get to see the good and the bad. <laughs> so uh, I probably have enough shots to, uh, to see if I'm, I'm, I'm I'm getting an idea how this works. I've done this a couple days. I've uploaded a few of the photos. I haven't really edited anything yet. So I probably should take the time and, and actually put some of these together and see if I'm on the right track. I've, I've used lenses from 55 millimeter to 135 millimeter. I've tried some getting really close. I think that's gonna probably be a good chance to fail <laughs> and I've also done some with this longer lens for their back and uh, we'll see this is it's just a fun way to expand the lenses I have when I'm out with one lens at a time it just lets me get different looks one of the uh, cool things about this process is since I have to sometimes shoot a high ISO if I am putting multiple frames together Basically, I'm just getting a bigger image area. 
So when I actually go to make a print, I won't be enlarging the grain so much. So it, it shouldn't be as uh, noticeable. I don't have to run as much uh, denoising software on it. And uh, that's, that's a kind of a nice side benefit to uh, making your image area bigger. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna, I think we're gonna end this video right here. I'm gonna start heading back and uh, see what we got. I'm Like I said, I'm not really all that confident. I've got some great photos, but it's been a lot of fun experimenting and that's part of the process. I'd like to encourage you to go out and experiment with your camera. Go out and uh, learn something new. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.